Hello guys, so welcome to another video. I'm MSD Creator and in this video I'll be showing you guys how you can you know start drawing with GIMP, you know, start digital art. So um so apparently a lot of people tend to think that oh yeah I wanna start with digital art but um I I, I can't buy a tablet or anything, that's too expensive. Because for a lot of people that is expensive. So well, you don't even need a tablet. So now you don't ha you can't use that excuse anymore. You're welcome. So I draw everything I have made until now. I have drawn it with a mouse. Okay, and I'll show you how I do it because I don't think this technique is actually that known or popular. I don't really know why, but yeah. So you can start by creating a new image. You can just choose image size 2000 by 2000. You can just press OK. Make a new image. I already have a made here, okay, and I have everything here. So you can start by making a new layer called main. Now this new layer, you can just call it main. Just call it main. We are new layer, okay. And now you should also have made like your character or whatever you want to draw on a piece of paper. This is the outline, okay? Nothing else. If it's shaded slightly, no problem. You should just be able to delete all of that shading out, okay? So I made a character. This character, this guy right here. Um. So you should. I took a picture of this uh, using Cam Scanner. You can just get it as well. It's just free, and it's pretty good as well. You know because it's pretty sharp. I just filtered some of the things out, and I got this. And it doesn't matter if it's good enough, it should just be it, it's good enough if you can you know tell apart, tell what's going on you should be able to tell where you're gonna put the lines so now we use this tool it's called path now this paths tool is very useful because it lets you use two points like you just put plot two points and it makes a line obviously and you can curve this line however you want you can curve this line downward you can make this line go here and you can use these two other small blocks I guess and drag them like this so you can adjust how curvy and how curved the lines you can make it shorter to make the line curve less you know from the initial point you can make it curve more so you can just play around with it and you'll understand how it works so yeah you can, and then to make a line like you know to solidify that line to solidify the line you can just press stroke stroke path stroke path and just press stroke done so you have your line done and you can just keep on doing this and once you're done you, and once you're done you can you know start with the colors so I have already done it so here's my final thing you can just keep doing this over and over again and just keep checking if it's good enough you know anything missing so I don't think there's any myth, anything missing. You can of course remove certain parts like this weird button. I'm just not gonna include it because this looks weird, you know. So you can do that. Done. Um, now you can start with the color. So I've already done the color. This is how it will look. So the color is basically you can start by choosing some color. I'm gonna go with something different, like I don't know, red, I guess. So like something light red i'm gonna color the t-shirt okay so i'm just gonna fill the t-shirt in you know just like that pretty nicely um you can go with a paintbrush i'm just gonna choose a decent paintbrush i'm just gonna choose this one okay so i'm still coloring the t-shirt and um you know you can you can go with something darker to you know give some more depth to this whole thing so I'm just gonna go with like little red just paint it so it doesn't look good enough that's a bit too dark you just need to keep experimenting around with this you can just you know uh, run around with all these color settings Fun, I guess. This that's fitting to some extent. 
So you can just, you know, I'll turn the whole thing. Hmm. That's not good. So, you, so just keep doing this over and over again until you get something good enough, you know. Well, this is good enough. So you can do the same with the arms and everything else, and yeah, you can, and then you can get something like this. I've already done this, so I already have this done. And if you can see these small spots as well, all I did for this was literally um. Okay, I just show you the whole thing. So uh. I'll just pick out uh, this color out uh, right here. Um, so make this whole thing. Lead it. Um, and just fill it in. And um, now we can just like outline this whole thing with something slightly darker. You know, have our shades in. So yeah, now to have this effect, we can just um, sort of use the same thing, just decrease the amount of force we have. Let's experiment with the force as well, because we just need to have the sort of uh, change in color every now and then, just to make it look more natural. Look at it. It's Still pretty decent, like still looks good, okay? And you can do the same thing with the arms and the I don't know, this head, weird looking head. You can do that with that as well. And, this, and you get this in the end. So this is what I got. And then for the background. So for the background I like to use Krita. That's a different software. But for something as simple as this, you can, for a basic background, you can just have something very simple, something like this. You can just use GIMP as well for that. But for something more, like slightly more complicated backgrounds, like uh, some of the previous fanarts I've had, you know, uh, I, I'll just show it to you. Okay, so this is uh, something I started before, like I just finished it yesterday. I uploaded it as well, you can check it out. In the description below, um, I'll link to all of the things I make, you know, the fan art I make. Uh, anyway, so I started with this. this is a character from an anime called Helsing, Alucard. Anyway, so I really like the way he did this, this sort of pose. So I do this out, and then I put it into GIMP and did the tracing bit, just like I did with that character, just like I did with this character, you know, just like I did with this character, this guy. So I did the same thing, traced him out, filled him in, and I got this. Now you, you can see, you can probably see that um there's no shadow here, and that's because I wanted to because I didn't know how I was supposed to do that with GIMP because I know a much more used better tool in Krita, so I used that in Krita and I got this, which looks pretty decent. And um then I need a background. So for the background, I just did a small um, moon. I took a moon and um, ha made it glow, and then it looked like this. I added like some text, added the logo and the anime logo. I gave it some extra depth as well because I realized there was no depth before, so I had to give it to it in Krita. And I added this fog-looking effect, which looks cool as well. With um. Krita because um, Krita's brush for fog is just like this to be honest, it's not really a fog brush, it's just that you really use it for anything. So I thought it looked cool like that, so I just did this, you know. Um, 
so again I'd rather use a uh, create of this sort of thing because GIMP I don't believe is the best one for this sort of thing of course you can achieve the effect but it's just that Krita's brushes are just much better because they have the they keep they have these things where they um you know scale up and down and rotate here and there was pretty good as well so that's one thing okay so yeah for something like this you can with the background and stuff you, can, you should probably use Krita it's just much better but for something like uh, this something as simple as this you don't really need Krita yeah, if you want, sure, why not? You can have some better effects with Krita and stuff. You can have better smoke effects like I did with another character before. Uh, this person right here. This person. So I you had to make the smoke with Krita. The, because the smoke effect is kind of hard to do. Or at least I don't know a way to do it in GIMP. So I had to use Krita for that. Um, yeah. Yes. The bottom line is that um, GIMP is for the basic stuff like you know shading, shading, and um, drawing, outlining, and making the line art. Well, Krita is for more of the slightly trickier stuff and uh, more, you know, feature needed brush, feature feature needed stuff like um, coming up with good backgrounds, making extra effects, special effects, stuff like that. So that's what Krita is for, well for, for me at least, so it's for someone who's using a mouse it's probably for that sort of thing. So I know it's a bit annoying to download two softwares and use them simultaneously, but you don't need to use both of them, you can just use one, but I recommend using both because having a good background is, is actually really important, even if it's a decent color background it doesn't matter, it should just be good, you know. Anyway, I hope you understood something. I hope this helped. I hope this tutorial helps you. And if you do make something, send it to me in the comments below. Just I'll link it to wherever you send it out. Link it to me and I'll be sure to check it out. And if you have any questions, don't worry. I'll probably be there to answer them. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day and... Goodbye.